So welcome to part two of A Course in Miracles. Um, tonight we start with the next section, uh, What is Sin? And um, before I go into the text, let me just give the simplest explanation. Sin is simply an error in perception. Sin is not real. And so let's give it a, an analogy um, to put it into context. Imagine you're dreaming at night and at night you've created some crime. Um, you may be addressed it in your dream, but when you wake up in the morning, nothing happened. And the same thing, the son of God is dreaming. He's dreamt up 8 billion thoughts that have taken form characters in the stream in the world of world we live in. And no matter what we seem to do, there is laws and punishment in this world of dreams. But when we wake up to our true self, Christ self, no matter what we did, it wasn't real. And so that's the reason there is no reason for guilt. So what does the Course say? The Course says, sin is insanity, tongue-in-cheek, because it is. It's to believe in sin. To believe in sin is insanity. It is the means by which the mind is driven mad and seeks to let illusions take the place of truth. So the Son of God, your true self, is dreaming. And or a part of it is dreaming, a part of it is awake. The part that is awake is the Christ mind. The part that is asleep we call the dreaming mind or the ego mind. And in the ego mind's activity, because this universe is the activity of the ego dreaming mind, it wants to replace the truth of what it is, which is pure peace, pure joy, pure essence of love, with the idea of people, places, things, and events pursuing peace, love, and joy. And being mad, it sees illusions where the truth should be, because what really, we're all abiding in God's eternal essence. But because we're perceiving through the filters of a dreaming mind, we're seeing objects, and we're seeing a subjective reality based on the filters of our individual localized minds. The collective mind, the collective dreaming mind, is seeing an objectified universe, an, a, a universe of objects as it localizes into thought form, spirit, which then projects into physical form, the body, mind, us, the filter's already in place. And the filter is based on the idea of having sinned, forgot, having forgotten what we are, we imagined we sinned, fear crept into the dream and we started to feel guilty and the fear then became the, the foundation of this, this illusion of ours called the universe, the world. And then, because we imagine that what created us must be vengeful like ourselves, an imaginary God, we then try to absorb the imaginary God's power by proving to our imaginary God that we could create better than he could, not realizing we are made from the very self-same essence as true God, true God, Brahman, Father, which is just pure energy, pure essence energy, pure love, unconditional accepting energy. And what are we? We're the same energy. And so being mad, it sees illusions where truth should be, where our true self is. Sin gave the body eyes. It created characters, gave them eyes with which to see illusions. For what is there the sinless would behold? What could you possibly see when you are pure energy without sin, without manifestation? What need have they of sights or sound, sounds or touch? or feelings, or emotions, or sensations? What would they hear or reach to grasp when it's just pure energy, pure light? What would they sense at all? And this is vital in understanding. Remember, first comes perception. Perception is thought. Thought becomes a sensation. Sensation becomes a feeling. A feeling becomes an emotion. These are the, the deepening of the identity and ego. So the sense is one step removed from thought. And it says, to sense is not to know. To think is not to know. And therefore, to sense is not to know. And the truth can but be filled with knowledge and with nothing else. And this knowledge is not human knowledge. It's If you take the collective knowledge of the human, what do we know? We can only know of things and places and, and events and activities and through our subjective reality. 
true knowledge is knowing, knowing what? Our true self, the knowing of God, the eternal essence, energy, which is God itself. The body is an, the instrument, the mind, the dreaming mind made in its efforts to deceive itself, to keep itself asleep, because it feared a vengeful God that could punish it or destroy it, just like it destroyed and made things, manifested things and destroyed things in the universe. Its purpose is to strive, to search, to seek, to, to, to be successful, to gain, to conquer, to be special. Yet can the goal of striving change? And now the body serves a different aim for striving because we've now handed it over to Holy Spirit. What it seeks for now is chosen by the aim the mind has taken to replace for the goal of self-deception because that's what we dreamt. Now we've given this, we've willingly, subjectively at first, given it to the concept of a Christ mind or the Christ itself energy or to God, or to our Holy Spirit. These are concepts. But at some stage, those concepts start to shift, and true knowing comes through, the knowing of the self, which is made of the self-same essence as God. So when to know the self is to know God. And so truth can be its aim as well as lies. So initially, we created or made manifest from a place to keep our possible awakening away from ourselves. Now it's used to bring the characters into self-realization as the mind, the dreamer awakens. The senses then will seek instead for witnesses to what is true. So once we sort, sort out a world of vengeance, a world of fear, a world of crime and punishment, we now seek for a new way of seeing a new world, a world of peace, a world of joy, a, a world of unity, awareness. Sin is the home of all illusions which but stand for things imagined, issuing from thoughts that are untrue, concepts, ideas, beliefs. They are the proof that what has no reality is real. So sin then proves that non-reality is real because we've objectified our subjective realities. Sin proves God's son is evil. Because look at the world of evil. How can people act this way so we some of us want to be good and empathy empathetic and compassionate while others are just pure evil so there's a part of god's son which is evil and timelessness must have an end eternal life must die and god himself has lost the son he loves with but corruption to complete himself his will forever overcome by death love slain by hate and peace to be no more. Is this possible? And that's why the school of non-duality with some great teachers, some beautiful teachers, Rupert Spira, Anna, um, there's some great teachers out there, Muji even, making the mistake that God is dreaming. God is not dreaming. God, the pure source energy, pure light is not dreaming. A particle of light, a particle, a sun of light is asleep dreaming a dream of separation. Why would God want to experience himself in what in first forget what he is in order to remember what he is? That's typical human thinking. That's not divine awareness. Awareness has is feel, fully aware of the awareness it is. It has no need to experience things. It has no need to experience what it's not. So as much as I love, especially a teacher like Rupert Spiro, who I admire with, with my whole heart. Um, that's the one error that Rupert makes, but he'll figure it out. <laughs> a madman's dreams are frightening, and sin appears indeed to terrify. And yet what sin perceives is but a childish game of people, places, things, and events, and a myriad of beliefs and thoughts of salvation and enlightenment and all these blissful concepts of how we can breathe ourselves awake or succeed ourselves awake or transcend ourselves we can but do nothing but return to the natural essence of what we are which is silent stillness where the silent stillness our true essence does the clearing of course we have to work with the silence and that is we work with forgiveness we practice forgiveness and gratitude 
the son of God may play, he has become a body or eight billion bodies, prey to evil and to guilt with but a little life that ends in death. But all the while his father shines on him, through him, through us, our holy memory of self, our Holy Spirit, and loves him with an everlasting love, which his pretenses cannot change at all. Pretending to be human, pretending to be this, to pretending to be spiritual. Spiritual is just another concept. We don't have spiritual lives. There's no such thing as a spiritual life and a different life or a normal life. We are a spirit. What people call spiritual is really just turning inwards. And that's a better way to put it. We turn inwards. We're all having a spiritual life. The rugby player has a spiritual life when he kicks the ball and everything goes silent and he drowns out the sound. A motorcyclist on the racetrack, everything goes quiet, present in the moment. A mother with her child, a, a father with his kid, um, two lovers together in, in intimate embrace timelessly. A person sitting watching the beach who has no idea of religion or philosophy or spirituality. That connection with the, with the instant moment, the holy instant, that is spirit. And that's not spiritual. What is spiritual? It's just another concept where we want to make ourselves more special because we're no longer religious. We're now spiritual. A religious person may have a divine connection with God too. I know of many. One of my close friends, Eric, does that all the time. He lives by his word, lives by the Bible. But there's just beauty coming out through him because he lives his understanding of what God's word is. And who are we to judge that who is more spiritual than another, more awake than another? This whole idea of different levels of this is all true in the dream, which isn't true at all. So it's not true. Um, spiritual people often go around saying, oh, I don't want to mix with those people. They're not awake. Or I cannot be around people that aren't awake. If you say that you're asleep yourself, there's no other people. It's all fractures of your same dreaming mind. Don't make yourself spiritually special. Realize it's all you. Connect with all of it. Accept all of it. Don't detach from it. This passion. No passion for it. No desire for it. But while you're here, you, you show up and pour yourself lovingly into your dream. How long, O oh Son of God, will you maintain the game of sin? The idea that you are better than others or more awake than others and others are just not worthy because they're sinful or asleep. So don't just think of sin as create, they've created a crime. Sin is also a judgment on levels of awakening, which is just nonsense. Shall we not put away the sharp-edged children's toys, the sharp-edged concepts that are primitive and, and judgmental and keep us bound by judgment? How soon will you be ready to come home, to wake into self, to abide in silent stillness, even as you act from, from an inspired intuition? Perhaps today there is no sin. Creation is unchanged. Creation remains unchanged. What is creation? The extension of God's energy, the extension of God's light forever, which we are a part of, just not realizing it because we're asleep. Would you still hold return to heaven back? How long? Holy, oh, holy son of God, how long would you stay asleep? Now I'll move straight into the next 10 lessons. Of course, you can listen to these at your own time. I would, if you're new, newish at this or you've been doing it for a little while, I, I urge you to do one a day. You can listen to my explanations as you read the text yourself. If you've been doing this course for many years, do all 10 in a row do the, the do the whole do the whole video uh, in a row and just allow it to come through don't think too much about it let your own explanations also come through to you i'm here to shed some light another perspective through my own experience am i right am i wrong it's just another experience another perspective for you that could complete our one indivisible self in awareness so lesson 251 I am in need of nothing but the truth. It's like saying, seek you first the kingdom and all else will, give, will be given us. I'm in need of nothing but the truth. Our primary purpose since we fell asleep is to remember the truth of what we are. I sought for many things but found despair. The prodigal son 
went wandering, took his energy and made manifest what? No matter what he made manifest, it could not last. We've manifested the entire universe. It hasn't made us happy. How is anything else you're going to make manifest and use law of attraction to attract into you going to make you any happier? The world of spirituality is littered with these law of attraction videos and law of attraction gurus and, and hypnotherapists and blah, 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 all going to hypnotize you. You're already hypnotized by your dreaming mind. Awaken to self. Abide in silent stillness. Wish and want for nothing. Realize you're connected to all of it. Abide in gratitude. Practice forgiveness. Any thought form that attacks you, attack thought form. Or any thought in form, a body mind, which is just a projection of a physical form. If it attacks you verbally, mentally, or whichever way, forgive, 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 because they're reflections of yourself and your unforgiven thoughts, your, your unforgiven habitual patterns, tendencies, calm, karmic actions. Forgive, forgive, forgive until there's nothing more to forgive, until you realize fully with total clarity that forgiveness is an illusion, but it's an illusion that ends all illusions. So I sought for many things and found despair. Now do I seek but for one, for in that one is all I need and only what I need. I want to know what I am. I want to fully, with total clarity, be myself knowingly, my true self, capital S. All that I sought before, I needed not and did not even want. I thought I needed those things. People, places, things and events, jobs, careers, success, money, in order to be happy. What I really wanted was to be happy, but I cannot be happy until I know that my essence nature is happiness itself. So you can't pursue happiness. You can't succeed yourself into happiness. You recognize your essence energy is pure peace, pure love, pure joy. Happiness comes and goes. Joy is permanent because it's our natural nature. I only need, my only need, I did not recognize to be myself knowingly. But now I see that I need only truth in that all needs are satisfied all cravings end all desires dissolve and hopes are finally fulfilled and dreams are gone one of our greatest fears is awakening in god but having forgotten we've lived forgotten who our parents were or our children are hey it's all one collective there will be no memory of this universe when we awaken as self in God. Now I have everything I could need. Now I have everything I could want. For what do I want? To be myself knowingly. And to be myself knowingly is to knowingly be peace, joy, and love. And now at last, I find myself at peace because I've now conceptualized this. I'm now starting to understand what I am. And that brings me a sense of peace. It's still sense. It's still witnessing too. It's still in dream state, but as I abide in silent stillness, in forgiveness and in gratitude, the silent stillness, the essence of the eternal now, which is the essence of God, clears my filters. I cannot transcend my filters through workshops, through psychology, parapsychology, spiritual psychology. You cannot. People have tried for, th for hundreds of thousands of years. They have not. So... Why not try another way? Abide in silent stillness. Realize meditation is just a practice of stillness. Eventually that stillness is all pervading because your very essence is stillness. And for that peace, our Father, we give thanks. What we denied ourselves, you have restored. You left the memory of what we are and what you are within us. And only that is what we really want in truth. Lesson 252, the son of God is my identity, not a body mind, not I, this body is a son of God. My true self, my true essence energy is God's son, fractured in 8 billion parts in this world, 9 subtillion throughout the universe. We're not spiritual, we are spirit. Everything we do is either promoting more sleep or self-awareness, awakening to self. Now, remember, I've said this a thousand times before we the body mind doesn't awaken we recognize we come to the recognition of our true essential nature our god nature our christ nature to be to put it into accurate words christ nature is god's nature 
We recognize the essence of what we are. Soul, if you want to call it, is the essence, extension, energy of God. And these characters, these body minds, are just perception filters preventing the light of what we are from knowing itself, like a cloud that prevents the sun from shining through. The sun hasn't stopped shining, but it's a cloudy day and you cannot see the sun. The body is the cloud. The sun is the self. It's shimmering and perfect purity is far more brilliant than any light that I've ever looked upon, including the sun, because the sun gets its light from the light we are. The light is that with which we see. Its love is limitless with an intensity that holds all things within it because all things exist in it. The entire universe exists in that light, in the calm of quiet certainty. Quiet, calm, quiet certainty. The only time you'll ever be certain of anything is when there's no single thought, no single sensation. Just abide in silent stillness. Abide in your true nature, which is God's nature. Its strength comes not from burning impulses which move the world, but from the boundless love of God himself in the silent stillness. How far beyond this world myself must be my capital S self, my true self, and yet how near to me and close to God. Well, I'll tell you this, it's closer than close because you're in it. Father, you know my true identity my identity what is my name i am it's the i that am i am reveal it now to me so abide in silence stillness when you do this and this is your greatest desire your final and only desire reveal it reveal it now to me who am i am your son that i may awaken to the truth in you so the dreamer awakens and the dream collapses, and know that heaven is restored to me. I've never left. I'm not achieving it. I'm just recognizing I've never left. Lesson 253, myself, capital S, myself, my true essence, my holy self, is the ruler of the universe. People are often saying, who the universe will provide? No, it's the self, the memory of God, the true essence of what we are that provides. Because this, the universe is an activity of my part of my mind, which is dreaming. The part of my mind which is awake is the Christ self, that which is the light of awareness. A part of the mind is consciousness, consciously asleep. And that part of the mind is what's dreamt up the universe. We're awakening, wrong mind, right mind. We're awakening to self, awakening to our right mind. It is impossible that anything should come to me unbidden by myself. Now, be very careful here. Even in this world, it is I who rule my destiny. Be very careful here. Destiny isn't how I choose to see things. The script is written. Your life is playing out. Your lives have played out. And if you have a hundred more to go, so it is. You can't stop the script from being played out. It's scripted. It's a play. You're playing a role. What you can choose is how you choose to see yourself in relation to the role you play. So you can play the role awakened to self. You can be the actor that realizes I'm just playing a role and I'm going to play sad and happy or whatever I'm going to play. I'm not personalizing because I'm awakened to the fact that I am an actor. Or you can take your role so seriously that you, the rest of the characters are your enemies or your friends. It's just a play. It's been scripted. Destiny is a definite. You fell asleep and you awaken where? In the same place, in the same destiny where you left. What happens is what I desire. Now, what I desire means if I'm projecting sin, fear, guilt, I will see sin, fear, guilt. No matter the most beautiful thing can happen to me, and you've seen people like that, have the most wonderful day, nothing's going wrong, and they're still complaining. And then you see other people, the shits really hit the fan, and they're still happy. They still see every cloud with a silver lining. That's your true will, to choose to see things. Not for as they seem, but what they are. Everything existing in the dreaming mind of the Son of God, which is an idea, a, a thought in God's mind. What does not occur is what I do not want to happen. So I don't want to judge. 
this I must accept. For thus I am led past this world to my creations, the extension of light we are, children of my will in heaven, where my holy self abides with them and him who has created me. Who created me? God. Not this body mind. This body mind is a projection of my dreaming mind. But the dreaming mind that dreams, my true self, that's what's created this body. And who created my true self? God created my true self. You are the self whom you created, son. This is us talking to God. This is us talking to our source. Father, you are the self whom you created, son. God's created us from himself, creating like yourself. And one with you, the extension of God forever. Myself, which rules the universe, which rules my dream, is but your will in perfect union with my own. So myself, my true self, the dreamer, which rules the universe, is but God's will. The dreamer is the will of God in perfect union with my own, which can but, which can but offer glad assent to yours, that it may be extended to itself. The dreamer awakening unto himself, awakening unto God's self, forever extending. Creation is extension, not making manifest, to make manifest, to make more illusions. And that's what the world wants. We want to learn spiritual tricks to make ourselves happy or appear happier. Lesson 254. Let every voice be but God's be still in me. This is the be still and know I am. So spiritual people love the idea that there's they're channeling some higher being, some angels, some ascended master, or some angels, guides, channeling. Do what Jesus did. Go direct to source. Go direct to through your Holy Spirit, through your Holy Essence, through the memory of God in you, to our source. Why do you want to get stuck in talking to angels? What are angels? They fractured representations of our one true Holy Self. The essence of them is loving. The essence of them is peace because the essence of them is not filtered through the filters of a dreaming mind. But we're still witnessing them. So if angels and spirit guides appear and disappear, then in truth they're not real. They fragmentations, representations of the ultimate truth, the absolute truth, God, love. So let's not imagine angels and want to see angels and want to see spirit guides and imagine we're talking to spirit guides or Jesus is talking to us. Jesus is a character in the dream, no different to us. Different in the way that he awoke to self, which is what you're doing. And he tried to teach us, you and I are brothers and sisters, what I can do, you can do, and greater things than I have done, you shall do. Listen to his guidance. If you truly love Jesus, you're actually loving a concept of your highest possible self. Recognize everything's happening simultaneously. So even though Jesus lived 2,000 years ago, it's simultaneously happening in the dream. But it's appearing as time, linear time, because that's how the dream is made up. Why? So that we can choose again, choose again, choose again, thinking we're choosing again. It's one simple choice. We fell asleep, we wake up. Father, today I would but hear your voice. God's voice is the silent stillness. And sometimes it filters through our perceptual mirrors, our perceptual filters inside our mind. And we imagine we're hearing a voice. And it's very real to the to the jiva, to the body-mind identity that is starting to awaken to self. And so, yes, by all means, there's a place for that in space and time. But if you truly want to go direct and awaken in this apparent lifetime, awaken to self. So if you should have to come back in more scripts, at least you come back awakened to self. Do it now. Go direct to source. Angels are wonderful. They've played a role in your life. Spirit guides and all the myriads of ascended masters that you've that you've worshipped and prayed to. You're only but praying to you, fractures, fractures of your true self. Even an angel is a fracture of your true self. Now let's go direct to source, direct to our creator. 
I have no prayer but this. I come to you to ask you for the truth. Remind me, Father, of what I am. And truth is but your will, which I would share with you today and every other day. Today, we let no ego thoughts direct our words or actions. No concepts, no beliefs, no processes, no paths. Return to silent stillness. This is the way and the truth, as Jesus said 2,000 years ago. When such thoughts occur, we quietly step back, recede, abide, and look at them. Here's the direct path. Observe. To whom do they appear? Search for the source of them. You know, we hear in Advita Vendanta, wow, this is amazing. This is being taught right here, right now. This course is 40 years old. It's here. You don't have to now go off and eat, pray, love, and go and do an Advita course. By all means, if you want to. The Tao teaches the same thing. The Tao Te Ching teaches the same thing. Abide in silent stillness. And then we let them go. Don't engage. You only have to practice self-inquiry once. Realize thoughts have no substance. They have no source. If you go to the very root of every thought, you realize there's nothing there. If you go to the very root of your body-mind, quantum Science proves there's nothing there. Atoms become nothing. Abide in silent stillness. There you are. You are the silent stillness. The self is the silent stillness. God is the silent stillness. The eternal silent stillness here now. The silent stillness which is peace. The silent stillness which is joy. The silent stillness which is the acceptance of what is. Which is non-judgmental. Which means unconditional love. Step back. Pay no attention. Don't push away. Don't try and destroy them. Don't try and clear them. Don't try and understand them. You can't understand an illusion. It'll fill your mind with more illusions. Your mind will want to explode and still you'll know nothing. Abide in silent stillness. We do not want what they would bring with them. Stories and illusions. Questions upon questions upon questions that makes us think we're so, wow, look at us. We're going down this incredible path of spirituality. No questions. The inner path is silent. And so we do not choose to keep them. Like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Satan tempted him, when thoughts tempted him, Satan, egoic attack thoughts. Get behind me, Satan. I'm not paying attention. No matter what you want to show me, I'm not interested. They are silent now. And in the stillness, hallowed by his love, God speaks to us and tells us of our will as we have chosen to remember him. What is our will? To truly remember ourselves, to truly remember our source, to remember God. What's God's will? That we remember him and shine as his light forever, shine as his love forever. Our will and God's will is the same. But it doesn't appear to be so while we're pursuing dreams and fantasies and trying to make manifest more illusions to keep us bound to our dreaming illusion. Lesson 255 states, this day, of course, every other day while I appear in time, I choose to spend in perfect peace. This is what we truly want. Don't look for happiness. Don't try and self-love. Find the peace in the silent stillness. Find self-acceptance. The love of self will permeate through you. You cannot love yourself. You cannot love a body-mind idea concept. You cannot love an appearance. But you can recognize that at the very core of the appearance is love itself, is peace itself. We are always in God. The dreamer is always in God. And we characters are always in the dreamer's mind, in Christ's mind. So we are always in peace. By abiding in silent stillness, gratitude and forgiveness whenever attack thoughts come, we return our awareness to peace. It does not seem to me that I can choose to have but peace today because that's all I can choose, to be myself knowingly, to be the peace and love and joy of God knowingly. And yet my God, my source assures me, how do I know this? Is it a concept? No, because it's calling us from inside to return to it. It's why we seek it. If we're seeking it, it's because it's causing it, calling us from our from inside to want it. And how do we know that it's true?
because every single uni person in the universe wants peace, wants joy, wants love. Every single one of us. Every single one of us wants other things too. And what wants other things is illusion. What wants exactly the same thing is the truth. Peace, love, joy. Who doesn't want that? My cat wants that. Let this day have faith in him. Let, I, let me this day have faith in him. Now, we're not looking to trust and have faith in concepts. We want to have faith in the silent stillness, which is the essence of God, which is the essence of our true self, our Christ self. Let me this day have faith in him who says I am God's son. Who says I am God's son? The memory I am. The memory of I am that abides in silent stillness, in joyous peace. You, we all know this intrinsically. You don't have to read it in a book to be told about it. It's the simplest truth. And truth is always simple. It doesn't require a myriad of beliefs and a thousand, hundred thousand followers and to build cathedrals and churches and require money. And it doesn't charge for its work. It's just free. For we are free. And let the peace I choose be mine today. Bear witness to the truth of what he said. God's son can have no cares and must remain forever in the peace of heaven. Why? Because we are all forever there. In his name, I give today to finding what my father wills for me. His name, God's name. What's God's name? It's my name. It's I am. Accepting it as mine. And giving it to all my father's sons along with me. Sharing it completely. Passionately sharing our peace, our love, our joy. We complain the world is such a horrible place. We seek peace. How can you seek peace unless you become peace and offer peace? We seek unconditional love. How can you find unconditional love until you become knowingly the unconditional love you are? And then share it with the rest of your fractured selves. And so my father... I would pass this day with you because I'm always in you. How can I be anywhere but there? Your son has not forgotten you. I may have thought I forgot you, but as I choose to remember, the memory of you returns to me because I will to remember thy will. The peace you gave to him still is in his mind and it is there I choose to spend today and every other day while I appear to be informed. Lesson 256, God is the only goal I have today. Our ultimate goal, our primary purpose, our primary reason for being here is none other than to, well, there's no reason to be here. It's because we fell asleep. But now that we're here, there's only one goal. There's only one purpose, to be ourselves knowingly, to remember the true essential nature, our true essence energy of what we are. And so as we realize what we are, we realize this isn't real. And our essence returns to the part of the mind that awakens. And as each one of us comes to self-realization, awakening to our true self, our Christ self, our true essence energy, the holy memory of God we are, each one of us dissolves in identity. That's all you need to do. Dissolve the identity that you're a body mind. And your spirit essence returns to the Christ mind from which it came, and each one of us lights the mind a little bit more. You want to heal the world? Heal thyself. You want to awaken the world? Awaken thyself. For each one of us that awakens, another part of the mind awakens. And so as more and more parts of the collective Christ awakened mind light up in its memory of itself, the world of illusion dissolves. The way to God is through forgiveness here. Why? Because it lets go of identity and suffering and right and wrong and good and bad and past and future. There is no other way. If sin had not been cherished by the mind, by the dreaming mind, made real by the dreaming mind, what need would there have been to find a way to where you are and have never left? Who would still be uncertain? Who could be unsure of who he is? Holy Son of God, and who would remain asleep in heavy clouds of doubt about the holiness of him who God created sinless. We've bought into concepts and beliefs. We've made it real. We've sought for God, but bought into concepts of sin. How paradoxical, how ironic, how nightmarish, how completely insane. 
Yeah, we can but dream. But we can dream we have forgiven him in whom all sin remains impossible. And it is this we choose to dream today. The happy dream. The right-minded dream. God is our goal. Forgiveness is the means by which our minds, our fractured localized minds, return to the one absolute mind, the mind of Christ, which returns to the absolute God. God is our goal. Forgiveness is the means by which our minds return to him at last. And we will realize, we will forget we've ever dreamt. We will realize we are eternity. We are the love of God forever extending. And so our Father, would we come to you in your appointed way? The script is written. Let me not decide how my life should play out. Every time you suffer, it's because you've imagined it should play out in a certain way and you haven't accepted what shows up. And so you're in resistance and resistance becomes suffering. We have no goal except to hear your voice, to hear and remember the memory of you and find the way to your sacred word that your sacred word has pointed out to us. Be still and know I am. Lesson 257. Let me remember what my purpose is. Our primary purpose is to remember what we are by returning to the awareness of our essential nature, which is God's nature, which is Christ's nature. Father and Son share the same nature. If I forget my goal, I can but be confused, unsure of what I am, and thus conflicted in my actions. No one can serve contradicting goals and serve them well. I want to know God, but I want to have more illusion. Seek ye first the kingdom. All else shall be given you. And they may come in the form of illusions, but you won't be valuing the illusions. You'll be valuing the essence of the joy you are. Nor can he function without deep distress and great depression, because Illusions constantly fail us. It's why we're doing the course. It's why we're searching for a spiritual path. It's because no matter what we made manifest, no matter what we desired, no matter what we dreamt, no dream can fulfill us because dreams illusion. Only truth can fulfill us for truth is what we are. Let us therefore be determined to remember what we want today, that we may unify our thoughts and actions meaningfully and achieve only what God would have us do this day. Let's pour the love we are, God's love we are, with the rest of our fractured selves. Because by sharing ourselves, we know what we are. We want to awaken what we want to awaken to the truth, not to more concepts and beliefs. We want peace. But if we were to retain our body-mind identity and imagine concepts like we as a body are going to go to heaven, we're going to be trapped in the hell of our dream for a long, long time to come still. Father, forgiveness is your chosen means for our salvation. In heaven, there was no need for forgiveness because there was no error. And in heaven, there still is no need for forgiveness. But in our dreaming mind that has forgotten what it is, in the dream, forgiveness is required. That's only in the dream. Forgiveness isn't a real activity because it's only a dream activity. But it's the dream activity which ends all dreams. Let us not forget today that we can have no will but yours. Why? We're made from God's essence. What can God's essence possibly will for? More of what God wills. What is God will? Eternal extension of love. Eternal extension of light. Eternal extension of energy we know as peace, love, and joy. And thus our purpose must be yours as well. If we would reach the peace you will for us, the peace that you've made us from, the love that you've made us from. God is the love with which we love. God is the love with which we love God. Lesson 258. Let me remember that my goal is God. And before I continue here, just be aware that when you set your intention like this, your, your final intention and not human intention to make manifest, but the intention to remember. The chattering doesn't stop. We think that when we awaken to self, the chattering stops. The chattering is this con constant commentary. It's either attacking you or attacking the world. It's constantly commentating. Be aware of it. Ignore it. And the, if you ignore it, you take away its energy. And if you take away its energy, it fades to nothing. 
It's like switching off a radio. Be aware of its constant chatter and realize that chatter is not you. It's just an error in the program. It wants you to believe that it's you chattering. Let it all go. Switch off the radio of the ego chatter. All that is needful is to train our minds to overlook all the little senseless aims and to remember our goal is God. His memory is hidden in our mind. So in us is the memory, the Holy Spirit. Obscured but by our pointless little goals, our desires, our dreams, which offer nothing true and do not actually exist in God's absolute reality or in our Christ mind, which is unified with God's absolute reality. Shall we continue to allow God's grace to shine in unawareness while the toys and trinkets of the world are sought instead? God is our only goal. Our only love, God is love, and is therefore what we are. We have no aim but to remember him, to remember we are love. Our goal is to follow in the way that leads to you, Father. We have no goal but this. What would we want but to remember you, to remember ourselves, to know that we are the love of God? What could we seek but our true identity, not our body-mind identity, but the true identity, we are the extension of God. We are the sun extension of God. Be quiet, go within. And in the silent stillness, you will recognize the truth of what I've just said. Lesson 259. That Let me remember that there is no sin. Sin is error. And therefore, if there's no sin, no judgment, just realize what Jesus said on the cross in his final breath. Forgive him, Father. For they but dream. Forgive me, Father, for thinking they were doing something. Forgive me, Father. Just forgive me. Forgive them. Forgive us for this illusion. Forgive myself for having dreamt this up. Thank to myself for awakening to self. Sin is the only thought that makes the goal of God seem unattainable. What else could blind us to the obvious and make the strange and distorted seem more clear? The world looks clear. It looks real. It is not. It's what lies. It's what it what it abides. It is real. It's the essence, energy of everything that is real. What else but sin engenders our attacks, our judgments on self and others? What else but sin could be the source of guilt, demanding punishment and suffering? Or in a lighter way, I'm more advanced. Look at those people. They're asleep. Look at those. They're toxic. Look at those. They're completely asleep. Look at those. They have no concept. It's a judgment, and judgment keeps you bound to dreams. Everything is playing out exactly as, as it's meant to. Are you God? Do you know what? why anything's playing out? You don't. You can't know anything because you're an activity in a dreaming mind that has forgotten what it is. If the part of the dreaming mind cannot remember itself, how could you possibly surrender this to the part of the mind which is awake, Christ's mind? which remembers itself in oneness with its creator. What, what else but, the, but sin could be the source of guilt? And that's why we punish ourselves and we don't believe we're worthy and we live in poverty and we think it's good to be spiritual and it's, we have to be alone. We're not meant to be alone. We're all one. And what but sin could be the source of fear? And what is fear? But that which obscur obscures God's creation, God's light giving love the attributes of fear and, and of attack. It hides the light behind objects and subjective realities. Let's return to the absolute reality where we know ourselves as the ever eternal extension of God's love. Always here, always now, eternally. God is always now. It's always simultaneously now, forever. There's no time in God. There's no space in God. And there's no matter in God. It's just pure energy, pure love, pure light. Father, I would not be insane today. I would not be afraid of love, nor seek for refuge in its opposites. You don't have to wait until your life is perfect to connect with another person. Imagine you had the perfect paradise, but you lived there alone. Would that make you happy? Or would you rather live in a little cabin 
but share it with everyone around you and just joyous laughter and communion and camaraderie and joyous brotherhood. How many of us have pushed away love because we wanted to be more spiritual or be more awakened or put it on hold until our little lives are perfect? What have we done? We've thrown away the opportunity to see the reflection of Christ shining back at us in a mighty companion, in a brother, in a sister, in a child, in a parent, in a colleague, in a boss, in, on a person on the street, a person in an elevator. We push away love. We don't make contact. We don't connect. We don't look at each other. We don't validate the true essence of Christ in all of us. Don't wait for your life to be perfect, to open the love you are and to share the love you are. For love can have no opposite. What is all-encompassing has no opposite. What is the opposite of love? Nothing. What is the opposite of fear? Love. What is the opposite of hate? Love. What is the opposite of any human emotion? Love. But love can have no opposite. You are the source of everything there is. And everything that is remains with you and you with it. You remain in God forever. You just dream that you've gone somewhere else. Prodigal son, return knowingly that you have never left the kingdom for your essence energy is God's kingdom. You abide in God, God abides in you. God is not dreaming. We are dreaming. He, we, his son, one collect, the whole universe is the activity of one collective mind. The dreaming, the part of the mind of God's son that is dreaming. God is not dreaming. Let us remember what created us and awaken to that. God did not create body mind. He didn't create the universe. God has absolutely nothing to do with this universe. When you pray and you ask for things, objects of desire in order to be happy, that prayer is not heard. The only prayer that is heard is the, heard, the prayer of the heart. And the prayer of the heart is a recognition prayer that remembers its true self, its holy self, its memory of God within itself. And the prayer of the heart is always a prayer of gratitude. Gratitude. It asks for only but one thing. Let me remember myself and gratitude in joy and in total joyous abundance. Father, I did not make myself, although in my insanity I thought I did. I dreamt I did. Yet as your thought, capital T, thought of love, I have not left my source. I have not left you, Father. Remaining part of who created me, God created me. The real essence of this body mind. Your son, my father, that which dreams, calls on you today. Let me remember you created me. Let, remember, let me remember my identity, my I, my I amness. Let my sinlessness arise in awareness again before Christ's vision, the vision of the mind which is awakened to self, through which I would look upon my brothers and myself today. I want to be that part of the mind which sees my true self sees true reality, even though it appears as this universe, I realize all of it is the face of Christ. The face of Christ, all of it is love, the extension of God's love. So to finish lesson 260, now is our source remembered. Now is Father and Son united. And therein we find our true identity at last. We are the love of God. Holy indeed are we, because our source can know no sin, and we who are his sons are like each other and alike to him. In each body-mind appearance is its true essence. Call it soul if you like. Its true essence is holy. It's its Holy Spirit. And we all are the identical Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the I Am, the Holy Son of God, the eternal extension of love, forever extending the love of God we are. I hope this comes to you with clarity. I hope it comes to you with certainty that you can be yourself knowingly and shine the love you are knowingly with the rest of your fractured selves. Be the light of God. Be the light in the world, awakening to God, awakening to our true self in God as the extension of what God's love is. Be that knowingly. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Keep listening to this for the next 10 days until it permeates through you and comes to you with total clarity. Be blessed.